Shelby from 304. Uh, what can I do for you? Um, Bert. Bert. Yes, sir. I think I may have asked you to hold my calls. You don't know? Well, I think I may have. I'm not too many on the phone. All right, you said you like to look people in the eye when you talk to them. Yeah. You don't remember saying that. Well, that's the thing. I have this condition. A condition? It's my memory. Amnesia? No, no, no. It's different from that. I have no short term memory. I know who I am. I know all about myself. I just, since my injury, I can't make new memories. Everything fades. If we talk for too long, I'll forget how we started. And the next time I see you, I'm going to remember this conversation. <laughs> I don't even know if I met you before. So if I seem a little strange or rude or something, uh, I've told you this before, haven't I? Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I don't mean to mess with you, but it's so weird. The uh, learning outcomes for this lecture, or this unit, I should say, are the following. If you only remember one thing from this particular presentation, yeah, I hope it's this. Our memory is usually divided into short-term and long-term memory. Long-term memory is divided into in explicit and implicit. Explicit memory is divided into episodic and semantic. So short-term memory is the capacity for holding a small amount of information in the mind in an active, readily available state for a short period of time. Okay, very quickly, commit that set of letters to memory. Okay, you've got five seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one. Right, what was that um, set of uh, letters with all your clickers, please? You've got 30 seconds to st answer, starting from now. Okay, so the correct answer was indeed D and 10 people got that right. Fantastic, but three people got it wrong. Okay, I'm going to give you five seconds to remember this. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Now which set of letters was it? Okay, you've got 30 seconds to answer starting from now. <coughs> this time everybody got it correct. Okay, so... Um, why is the second task easier? Obviously, because the second one was split into some kind of manageable chunks. Okay, so even though we have the capacity of short-term memory is only four to five items on modern estimates, an item doesn't necessarily have to be a single digit, or a letter it can be a chunk of information, uh, which can, and a chunk can consist of several numbers or letters. Okay, now the sequences uh, and a chunk to be a chunk it has to be some kind of meaningful unit. So the sequences FBI, PhD, and so on are both can both be regarded as single items or single chunks, but, well, single items because they've been those three letters have been chunked together. They be they fit into what is already a meaningful, recognisable unit. Long-term memory, on the other hand, can last up to a lifetime. The capacity of long-term memory is you know, much much bigger than short-term memory. The cumulative amount of data stored in the brain over 70 year lifetime may be around 125 megabytes. Long-term memory, <coughs> we can divide that into episodic and semantic memory. We've covered now the main types of memory, short-term, long-term, long-term divided into explicit and implicit, explicit into episodic and semantic. And we know those types of memory are all different because they can each be lost independently of the other. Okay, so here's a quick quiz then to test. <coughs> Mrs. Jones can remember how to vote, but she can't remember who she voted for yesterday. What kind of memory is impaired in Mrs. Jones? Many people got that right, it's semantic memory indeed, and but a few people not getting it correct, so there's a little bit there's a bit so getting right. Episodic. Sorry, sorry, episodic. My, my mistake. Thanks for correcting me. Very good. Now that's memory. Memory you can think of as a storage bins, okay? Places or sort of functional repositories where we store information. Learning is so memory is like a thing. <coughs> Learning is obviously an action. And learning is the action which consists in putting information into those bins. So, me mechanisms of uh, learning, okay, at a cellular level or synaptic level, involves a process called LTP or long-term potentiation. At the uh, more macro structural level, learning involves moving information from one part of the brain to another. We tend to often think of forgetting as some kind of failure. And some kind of breakdown in the machinery of learning, but in fact, you know, that can't be true. So forgetting too little is just as bad as forgetting too much. And that's really nicely illustrated by a story by Jorge Luis Borges, Funes de Memorias, here's an extract. But of course there is abnormal forgetting as well. Uh, abnormal forgetting, it's a sort of very sort of crude way of summarising, I guess, what we refer to more technically as amnesia. Various sort of possible causes of head injury, most, well, sorry, of amnesia. 
So the take home message. What was the take home message? Sorry? There are different types of memory. Fantastic. There are different so the take home message that I was hoping was that there are different types of memory.